we obviously need some concrete progress. I explained to the Chinese and they agree, we want to talk about the long-term issues, but we need to deal with the pressing short-term issues so we have enough confidence on both sides to, uh, to keep moving forward. Treasury Secretary Paulson on Squawk Box this morning addressing the China trade talks taking place right now. Should we crack down on China, get Congress involved to enforce trade rules? Jonathan Jacoby, Associate Director for International Economic Policy at the Center for American Progress, says Congress should be doing more to ensure that China plays by the rules. Daniel Eikenson, Policy Analyst at the Cato Center for Trade Policy Studies, boy, these guys have long titles, says we need to get tough on China, but not with more congressional involvement. Okay, if not with more congressional involvement, how can we do it? Uh, are you asking me? Yes. Yes. Well, the, the administration in, in 2006 said, uh, you know, the honeymoon period with respect to China is over. Well, we've given them five years to fulfill their WTO obligations. They've done a very good job in, in many areas. In some areas, they're lagging. So now we're going to start taking a new tack. We are going to consider uh, WTO dispute settlement, th that process, for China, as it does with Europe and Japan and other uh, countries with whom the United States has a mature relationship. Uh, this year, the United States filed three cases against China in the WTO, and you know the first stage of the dispute settlement process is uh, is negotiation, and that is going on this week in Washington. I have the feeling that uh, coming out of these talks is going to be some progress on a case involving subsidies that was filed in March. The Chinese, I think, have hinted that they are going to be cutting taxes, uh, cutting the tax breaks that they give their exporters, are going to be changing their laws so that the import consumption is not uh, dissuaded. And I think that is, uh, that is progress. What we don't need is for Congress to uh, be so provocative with the legislation it's proposing and uh, do something that would violate our own WTO commitments and possibly spark a trade war. Jonathan, you want Congress to get more involved. Are you new in town? Well, <laughs> Congress Congress <laughs> does play a role here, and it's, it's kind of the classic example of good cop and bad cop. The administration, uh, led by Secretary Paulson in this case, wants to take this long-term dialogue approach. And I can't blame him for that, but at the same time, I can't blame Congress for looking at the job loss that has hit the United States in, in a number of districts and then saying, well, is there anything that we could be doing to enforce our trade laws with China more effectively? And that's where the administration really hasn't enforced up until they felt this pressure from Congress. So at this point, Congress has you know, a new voice and, and a more empowered role to play, looking at currency manipulation and so on. And if they're happy to play the bad cop role, I think that's an important role for them to play because this is oversight that wasn't there when the Republicans were heading up Congress, uh, say, for the last six years. Daniel, what do you think of that plan? Well, you know, I, you know, I think uh, Jonathan makes a mistake. The, the, this administration has been fairly forceful uh, with respect to uh, administering the unfair trade laws. Under the Bush administration, there have been more cases brought against China, anti-dumping cases, uh, than any other time in history. Uh, I, I, I think that the job loss situation, is, it's hard to really attribute that to trade. One of the problems in Congress is that there is this myth that manufacturing in the United States has imploded and as a result and it's attributable to unfair trade from China in particular and as a result we need to respond but the fact is that manufacturing is doing quite well we've uh, in 2006 output is uh, higher than it has ever been revenues for most manufacturing industries are uh, in record levels and profits for most of the 21 uh, manufacturing sectors that are broken out in the government data uh, are, are near record levels as well there's been a decline in the number of workers and wages have increased slightly but but manufacturing is not in bad shape. But there's really not a, you know, there's not a concerted effort by the administration, though, to make sure that it's a two-way street. And that's what we're talking about. That some of Dan's points are correct, and yet we can still say that is China really, you know, importing the, the level of U.S. goods that they can? They will typically go on a shopping spree, as they did last week, in order to show that they're suddenly buying American goods and services. But that doesn't sound like a long-term approach to me. It sounds like just an appeasement process where we do want to make sure that the dialogue fully represents what, you know, Congress and the American people are concerned about. One of those issues uses is labor rights. That's not something that Secretary Paulson has brought into the discussion at, at, within the economic dialogue, and yet it's something that's clearly a way to show good faith to Congress and the American people that we're concerned about whether Chinese workers are actually treated fairly. Okay, gents, I'm sorry. We're out of time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate you sharing your thoughts with us. Jonathan Jacoby, Center for American Progress, Daniel Eikenson, Cato Center for Trade Policy Studies. Liz. Will oil